streets locked down. They got barricades everywhere. And what should have been a 45 minute walk turned into over two hours because, you know, we would go to a checkpoint. The guys like, oh, you can't cross here. You can cross down there. We get down there. And it's like, you can't cross here. You can't. You have to go back over there. It's just, I mean, in just the way these guys were just so cavalier about it. It'd been one thing if they said, hey, they just told me to stand here. That's all I know is you can't come through here. But they would just like shoo you away, hoping that you didn't come back, you know, to, so they'd have to face you and own up, you know, to the, this uh, bunk information that they were telling you. But before we go <laughs> all the way back, and like I said, we'll go all the way back to uh, DC where we started our mission. I want to tell you guys what happened today. When we got on our plane to, uh, to come back, well, I came back here, David's uh, doing some uh, family things. Uh, well, first of all, we had the world's worst taxi service. With <laughs> I, I, was, I honestly want to name these people on air, but I know I shouldn't because they had like just the most incompetent thing. We barely got there by the skin of our teeth. But luckily, because I guess the Pope was in town, the TSA thought that there were no terrorists any place, anywhere, which, you know, we all know there's not a terrorist <laughs> under every rock in the first place. But we get there, and you know how you have to do the normal measures. You have to take your shoes off, take your belt off, take your laptop out. He's like, no, sir, you don't have to take your laptop out of your bag. Like, okay, well, I'll take my belt. You don't have to take your belt off. So I'm like, okay, so just because there's a big event and you have a lot of traffic, now all security measures have been suspended. So, And I walked through a metal detector. I didn't have to go through the body scan, which is good the way it should be. But it's just like anytime there's a big event. Like if there's an issue, it's going to be there where the yeah. Pope is, not here. Yeah, because <laughs> they, they have this huge traffic deal. Just like when Josh and I came back from the Super Bowl, they understood that if they start doing all the normal stupid pat-downs that they do, it's going to clog the thing. People are going to miss their planes. It's going to be a huge hubbub. So they said, no, you don't have to unpack your laptop and all this stuff. Just go straight to the line. So I'm like, why don't we traffic? just do that every day? Right. Instead of having to do this whole security, it's just complete security it, theater. Complete security theater, especially considering how locked down everything was. Yeah. So then now all of a sudden, you don't have to worry about the TSA at the airport. No, well, you don't have to worry about TSA at the airport because they are patting people down on the streets of Philadelphia. <laughs> and that's another point I wanted to get to. I think we have a clip, guys, of the, the TSA in Philly. It's, it's kind of just a walking shot. It's not the best footage. I have some other footage back there. But, um, yeah, so we're walking down the street trying to get to our hotel, and we see TSA out there checking people's bags, patting people down. This is like 11 o'clock at night just to walk down the street. Mm. And then, as I was saying yesterday on, the, on this show, uh, talking to Alex, you know, they had to give us a wristband so we could get back to our hotel. Because if you didn't have a wristband, you couldn't walk down the street. So you needed basically a hall pass to walk down the street <laughs> in the United States of America. If you wanted to go to the event, you had to get a TSA pat down or have your bag checks in or maybe possibly both. And to show you, Leanne, how ridiculous this security theater is, uh, we have some uh, B-roll, the barricades and all that other stuff. They have these big concrete barricades. You know, nobody's going to drive through these things. Yeah, you can see right there on your screen if you're watching on Infowars.com forward slash show. And David Knight made a very good point. You can see these barriers clear across the street. And we saw at one point uh, some guys in a golf cart, some cops in a golf cart, were trying to figure out, oh, crap, we blocked off the street. How are we going to drive our golf cart, golf cart <laughs> down the street? And then they sat there and they thought about it for a second. And they was like, oh, we can drive on the sidewalk. And David pointed out, well, if they can drive a golf cart on the sidewalk, can't you drive a car on the sidewalk? <laughs> Complete security theater. And you can see uh, how they have it all set up out here. I by bypassed this entire security perimeter. They had National Guard, every alphabet agency you can think of, local cops, sheriffs, all that, the whole shebang out there. And they had people out there checking tickets. And I wanted to go see the Pope in Independence Square in uh, Philadelphia. So what I did to bypass this entire security apparatus, <laughs> I walked around the people who were checking tickets, walked up to the TSA, walked into the event. You got National Guard everywhere. You got snipers on the roof. I walk into this event. I'm walking around. I'm taking selfies. I put up multiple reports. Um, sounds like a free man. Yeah, yeah. That's it sounds, yeah, ter that's, terrorist yeah, yeah, you can You can't just do that stuff in the United States of America. And one of the <laughs> biggest uh, ironies while I was there, Leanne, at Independence Mall, where the, the Pope was speaking out there in Philly, they have this thing called the National Constitution Center. The mm -hmm. National Constitution Center. And right in front of the National Constitution Center is what? A TSA checkpoint. <laughs> so you have to go through the TSA checkpoint, have your rights violated, get patted down, have them look through your bag and all this stuff to go in to see the National Constitution Center. And that's just one area. Like We'll talk <laughs> about all this. Irony. <laughs> we'll talk about what happened in New York. We'll talk about what happened. I guess we still have a little bit of time. 1984. Well, so we what do you this. think? I mean, so like when the president comes to visit Austin, obviously it's not even that locked down, that shut down. And I don't have to have a wristband to get to and fro. No, when, uh, uh, but also yeah, this is they where renamed the, the, the area Francisville. Yeah, that's, they, they that's where the Pope arrived. This. That's the closest I... <laughs> Got to, that's probably about 30 yards or so away. So in an area where I had no ticket, I got that close to the Pope. 
And the thing about this is you were talking about when Obama came. <laughs> Pope Mobile. Yeah, when Obama came <laughs> to uh, to Austin, Kid and I went down there. We got down to the University of Texas where he was speaking. He was, I think he was speaking at the LBJ Library. And we saw the motorcade. Like we could, of course, they're not going to let you any place near them. But Obama had less security in the city of Austin, Texas. Obama has less security in Washington, D.C. than the Pope had in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Right. And we don't rename our city after the president while he's here visiting. So, you know, there's that whole separation of uh, church and state. And here, I want to make this very clear to people <laughs> because I, I know you're like watching sound bites and seeing quick clips and all this stuff. To get this in your mind, if you, if you even, if you haven't been to Times Square, New York, I want people to understand that it was easier to move around in Times Square, New York, than it was to move around in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. because the streets were so blocked down or locked down because uh, the Pope was speaking at uh, Madison Square Garden, but there's a train station right underneath it. So the cops, you know, I don't give too many compliments to the NYPD that often, but they had the foresight to recognize this is still a very public area. So they did have barricades and stuff up, but they still allow traffic to go through in Madison Square Garden, as opposed to in the city of Philadelphia, concrete barriers like you cannot walk around. I want to see the Rocky statue. I couldn't go see the Rocky <laughs> statue because they had the city locked down. It was just that level of. The highlight of your trip, ruined there, denied. Well, I did get to eat my Philly cheesesteak, which I was going to be really pissed off. I didn't get to eat my Philly cheesesteak <laughs> in the city of Philadelphia. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just a complete security theater. In the backtrack, in the quick time we have left before we have to uh, come back with uh, some phone calls, well, we were in Washington, D.C. Uh, David and I, we were walking around, and, of course, they had barriers around the White House. But... After uh, the Pope's speech was done and he went on to another area, they quickly removed a lot of the stuff. And then afterwards, you could actually approach the White House fence. Of course, you can't go up to the White House, but they have a gate around. They open uh, that area back up fence. so you can get back <laughs> up to uh, to the White House area. And it's the same thing around the city. So the point I'm trying to make to everybody out there, even though there is no Obama in Philly, there was no United Nations in Philly. I met Daniel Craig, James Bond while I was out there yeah, in front that. of the United Nations. Even though none of that stuff was out there in Philly, they completely locked the city down for the security theater, the show of force. Just in, you can see the TSA pat well, down. Well, it shows that you is just kind of uh, how big time the Washington, Pope is and the influence if they would lock down these huge cities in this capacity for the Pope. And they don't even do those same things for Yeah, and Washington, President. I mean, I want everybody to look at this. This is TSA. They're not at an airport. They are not at a train station. This is a public street in the United States of America they're checking people's bags. They're patting people down. Do you want to live in a world like this where you have to get a freaking airport pat down to go to a public event? Because we already know they're doing TSA style bag checks when you go to uh, the Super Bowl or other sporting events. Can you imagine having to do something like this to go to a shopping mall if, you know, some celebrity shows up? Of course. And you don't want to live in that world. Right. And that's kind of the whole conditioning of it where we're going to be seeing these sort of things rolling out at sporting events and other things like this. But I mean, I don't I probably just wouldn't participate in those type of events where, I mean, but you said that they were m making people show them their bags and things like that at 11 o'clock at night. So the yeah, I mean, it's, like, it's not like something you could avoid. It wasn't like you could just walk around it because the cab drivers were told they couldn't drive through certain parts of the area. I uh, have some footage. I don't know if I put it in that folder, but uh, 11 at, uh, I guess about 11 o'clock at night, a Friday night in Philadelphia, there's like a hundred people on the street in the bar and club area. I mean, that's how locked down the city was. What would normally be a thriving economic boost for the community had been shut down just because the Pope was in town. Right. How do you party when the Pope's in town? I don't know about that, but I guess the people, that's what the plants crave, right? <laughs> <laughs> they can keep that. I, I don't want anything to do with all that. Well, we'll be right back. Rob Dew is going to be joining me in studio to let us know what's co coming up on the InfoWars Nightly News. Welcome back to the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. This is Overdrive with Leanne McAdoo. Now, Jakari Jackson is here closing out the show with me. We're going to go take very quickly your phone calls. Uh, but before we get there, I wanted to tell everyone to go to the InfoWars store and pick up Knockout. Now, we're introducing Knockout. It's the all-natural sleep support formula by InfoWars Life. And I'm going to go ahead and read... Uh, one of the reviews here, this is from Bob Near the Forest. He says, this blend is exceptional. For years, I have periodically taken valerian root or melatonin and get mixed effects and usually feel a jet lag style feeling the next day. Knockout worked over an, in over an hour and a half, and I felt very awake the next morning. So I think I'm personally going to have to be getting some of this myself because I'm having a really hard time sleeping at night, but it's got valerian root extract. Uh, GABA, melatonin, chamomile flower extract, 
and many other compounds. Feel the punch of knockout today at InfoWarsLife.com. All right, Jakari Jackson, I want to go ahead and take uh, a couple phone calls here very quickly. Let's talk to Bob. He's been holding there in Connecticut. Hi, Leanne. Hey, Jakari. How are you doing? You guys are the best. Oh, thank you. Listen, uh, I was indoctrinated for five years at a Catholic school when I was uh, second through sixth grade. I figured there was something wrong with the hierarchy of the church way back then. I bailed out of there after sixth grade. I told my father I'm not going back. Anyway, a few years later in high school, I started really thinking about it and uh, examining the history. And the Catholic Church is essentially built on hypocrisy because all they did was go around the world with the Spanish, the Portuguese, uh, and whoever. They subjugated the people, the indigenous peoples, stole their wealth, their resources, turned them into slaves, converted them, or killed them. Now, at that point, I was thinking, well... You know, I think this whole thing is a sham. I think this this religion, this the the hierarchy of the church, had uh, perverted the message of Jesus Christ. And now, here and everything going on with this pope here, uh, Francis, the Nazi from Argentina. Uh, you know, this guy here. I gotta believe, Jakar, you've been a little easy on him. I think he's probably the Antichrist right now. <laughs> Part of the well, you, you always have people who are, you know, antichrist a little a, you know, antichrist is just anything that's uh, not Christ, you know, so there are plenty of uh, little a antichrist in the world to say here that he's the, I'm not prepared to make such a statement. I don't know, he's pretty powerful. Every scary movie I've ever watched that is about that. It's always the Catholic Church, it's the Pope. And the thing about that, to speak more about the Catholic Church and the people who were, you know, at these events, there were so many nice people at the event. So I don't want to make any type of blanket statements, you know, talk about, you know, anybody who's a, a follower of that religion. There are very nice people out there of all races, you know, exactly. ages and all that stuff. But I, I would say that there is a, uh, if the Pope makes statements like this all the time, I'm very concerned for the Catholic Church because I really don't keep up with his activities until recently. But if he makes statements like he's made over the past six days all the time, I definitely have concerns for what's going on in that institution. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you so much, Bob, there in Connecticut. And, and I agree. It is definitely there is some transformation taking place. Uh, the Pope is kind of heading it up at this point. He's totally tied into the UN's 2030 agenda, transforming the world uh, about one minute, Jakari Jackson, you're going to be on the InfoWars Nightly News tonight. Tell us what we got coming up. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to be on with Rob Dew. He's going to be the main host. I'm just going to recap in a little more detail with a few more clips. Uh, our trip over the past six days documenting the Pope coming to America, all the police measures that came out. I think it was very much what Rahm Emanuel talks about. Don't let a good crisis go to waste. Exactly. There was a great time for the military industrial complex. They made a lot of money. They put a lot of troops out on the street. They put a lot of barricades out a bunch of MRAPs. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure they were very happy at the show and tell they got to do while the Pope was here. So you didn't like that tyranny? All right, Jakari Jackson. Well, that's coming up tonight, 7 p.m. Central. You can watch us there if you're a Prison Planet TV subscriber.